Good morning, I'm Dr Kerry Chant from New South Wales Health with the COVID update for Monday the 3rd of January 2022. Across New South Wales, 95% of people aged 16 and over have received a first dose of the COVID vaccine and 93.6% have received two doses. And of the people aged 12 to 15, we've got 81.5% have received a first dose and 78.2% have received two doses. There are currently 1,204 cases admitted to hospital with 95 people in intensive care, 25 of whom require ventilation. There were 20,794 cases of COVID reported in the 24 hours to 8pm last night and more than 96,000 COVID tests were reported during that period. As we've stated previously, um, the COVID numbers will change from day to day and the case positivity rate on a particular day will also change as we get those labor laboratory reports that come in um, in the 24 to 30, 36 and then 72 hours. We are looking at a, a multitude of figures, including our hospitalisations, ICU, and also keeping an eye on those um, case, case numbers, but very much um, needing to look at the whole picture. Sadly, New South Wales Health is, is reporting the deaths of four people with COVID-19, two men and two women. Two were aged in their 70s, one in their 80s and one in their 90s. And can I express my condolences to the family for their loss? New South Wales Health has one of the largest workforces in the country, or if not the largest workforce in the country, and our staff are incredibly skilled and committed. But we're seeing health systems around the world put under stress. And we, whilst we are very well placed um, amongst our global, um, in that global context to manage this um, case burden, it is important that we all play our part in um, not placing unnecessary burden on the health system. We do want people to be reassured that our health system is there if you need it. You know, people will be having chest pains and um, car accidents and other, other things that need that hospital system response. And be assured that it is there for you and do not delay. But there are some, some um, presentations that potentially are avoidable. Um, so for instance, if you're going to the emergency department to try and get a PCR test for COVID and you're not unwell, that potentially compromises the care for those that need it. Um, so please um, consider, consider your actions and the impact. And I know that people want to know what the diagnosis is and want to get that test result, but can you also just think about some of the implications of those actions? Um, in addition, I want to continue to urge the community to come forth for vaccination. That um, rate of vaccination in that 12 to 15 year old age group has been stubborn. It's been sitting around that 81.5%. So parents, please book your children in for vaccination. We've got school starting in four, four weeks time. So please um, get in now. We would like to see children fully vaccinated going into the commence the school year. And because of the interval, you need to act now so they can get the two doses in before commencing school. In addition, um, clearly the school, school children, children 5 to 11 are also opening up for appointments from the 10th of January. So go online and get those done as soon as possible. Again, we'd like to see high coverage amongst school children going into the 2022 school year. And the booster program. Um, my call out is to get boosters. There should be increased access to boosters through pharmacies, primary care, through our own clinics. It is essential that you get your booster when you're eligible and currently that interval is now four months. So anyone who's had their second dose um, within that four months period, please book online. A particular call out to those people who have underlying health conditions, elderly, people um, are above 60, people that are pregnant, people that have underlying health conditions. Whilst we're calling out for everyone to get boosters, 
my special plea is for those people that are at risk of more severe complications from COVID, really push ahead now and get your booster as soon as you can. In terms of understanding the risk of catching COVID from social exposures, I spoke yesterday about the fact that we've updated um, our guidance to give people the ability to assess their own social exposures. We're no longer interviewing all cases and establishing who has been in contact with the case. So we are relying on the community and the incredible community understanding of how COVID is transmitted. But what we're doing in that fact sheet is really giving you information so you can understand what, you, what constitutes a high exposure, a medium exposure and a low exposure, and some guidance about the actions we'd like you to take in those different settings. And I'm so pleased when I hear the stories of people uh, following those directions, reaching out to social networks, telling people you're positive, and people um, either getting a PCR test or a, a rapid antigen test and taking appropriate action. That will help us slow the spread. So thank you for that, um, being so responsible in the way you are contributing to slowing the spread of COVID. The other um, key message is um, the importance of us continuing to follow those COVID safe practices. Indoor mask wearing, uh, not going out and about when you've got symptoms, instead getting a test and taking that appropriate action. Limiting your um, gatherings to small sizes, taking them outdoors. Those simple steps can meaningfully impact on the transmission of COVID. Um, and so I really want to acknowledge the fact that the community is also um, positively embracing some of those things that they can do to stop, stop, stop or slow the spread of um, COVID. Thank you.